Hello everyone, just going to let the number of live viewers just tot up. Um, in the next few minutes and then we'll get started. Okay, hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, welcome along today. My name is uh, Niall Cullen. And today I'm going to be talking to you all about newspapers. Um, as I said, my name is Niall. Um, I've been working for Fly My Pass for about seven years now. And my role in the company is senior content strategist. And basically what that means is I really am behind bringing to life all of the stories and the interesting tidbits from your family's past and, and getting them out there to you, whether that's on the blog or through emails, um, through video and all of the content on our social media channels as well. Um, I've just added here onto this first screen my, my own favourite family discovery of my own. Um, obviously, I'm sure you can hear from my accent that I'm Irish. Um, I'm a Dubliner born and bred. And my favourite family discovery is my great-grandfather, who I found in Find My Past Dublin Workhouse Registered, um, which are really detailed uh, records on uh, people who went to the workhouse in Dublin. And I found him there with his mother and his two um, siblings, his brother and sister. He was about 10 years old at the time. Um, and they were listed there along with their address, so really detailed records. And then around 10 years later, um, I found him in the British Army records. So it's kind of a, a rags to riches story, really. So he started off in... Um, the workhouse destitute, um, but then went on to be actually to actually win a, a, an army medal. Um, he fought in the Boer War and won a medal at it. So that's my favorite family discovery personally. But what am I actually here to talk to you today about? Well, it's all about newspapers and the power of newspapers when it comes to your family history. Um, so the, the title of the talk is Extra Extra, Discover Your Family Making Headlines. And that's what I try, well, try and give you some tips to do today as we go along. So what are we actually going to cover in the next 30 minutes or so? So I'm going to go run through what newspapers can actually tell you about your past. And the short answer is a lot. They're one of the richest sources you can look at for finding out about your family history. Um, so we're going to take a look through the different bits and pieces that you can find out by looking at newspapers. You can also then look at, we'll look at what's actually available on Find My Pass in terms of newspapers. We have one of the biggest collections online, so it's definitely worth always having a look at. And I'll run through exactly what's incorporated in those collections. Uh, then I'll quickly look at some handy tips and trips tips and tricks excuse me for exploring the, the newspapers on find my past handy search tips that you can use as you're going in and looking through the newspapers how to actually make the most of them and then if i have time at the end i'll take some questions from you so um, please do pop them in the comments my colleague colleague alex i know is in there as well answering questions for you today and he'll pop some questions over to me so i can look at them at the end if we have time so let's get started what can newspapers actually tell you about your past well, one thing that it can tell you is the information that you won't find in other records. So a lot of people will start looking at, at their family history. They'll look at births, marriages, and deaths, and census records, and things like that. And they're all great for building up a picture of your family's history. But when it comes to the rich stories and the, the information and the details that you won't get elsewhere, newspapers are unrivaled. They're an unbelievable source to look at. You'll get color and context and the lie of the lives of your ancestors, stuff that you won't get in government records. You won't get in 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 birth records, marriage records, debt records. You, you could find stuff in the newspapers. Private details are often made public. So what we what the privacy um laws that we have today didn't exist hundreds of years ago so very often the most private of of family details that you'd never expect to find you'll actually find in newspapers newspapers are really also good for either confirming or, or quashing family stories so we all have them those family stories where that you've heard down passed down the generations um, and you've kind of, you kind of know some details, but you'd like to know a bit more. You'd actually like to confirm if it's just a rumor or not. Again, newspapers are great. One example of this is here on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, uh, this was a clipping from the Grantham Journal in 1937. 
Um, and this was sent in to us by a, a member of Find My Past who all, uh, kind of knew a story about their, their family history that one of their um, relatives had been sent to prison, but they never really knew the details behind it. They had just heard it been passed along. And it wasn't until they looked at the uh, newspaper collection on Final Pass that they were able to confirm that story. And this was the quote that was sent in to us by Samantha, our, our, a member of our Final Pass community. So Final Pass newspapers confirmed my suspicions when they revealed that my relative was in prison for fraud. So where else are you gonna find that kind of color and detail? Only in newspapers. So what else can newspapers bring to your family history? Well, they can actually give you really useful details for your family tree as well. So birth, mar marriage, and death notice notices were published in old newspapers, notices of divorces. If there's anyone, unfortunately, in your family history that committed suicide, that, that could be listed in the newspaper as a news story. Details of court cases and inquests, any military military achievements that you might not be able to find in military records, you could look at newspapers. Details on your family's property history. All of this kind of wealth of information you could find in newspapers. You'll see here on the right hand side, this dates back to 1759, an excerpt from the Scots magazine. And there you go, births, marriages and deaths are listed. So all the way back to 1759. So this is how useful newspapers can be in terms of getting those genealogical details for your family tree. And just a top tip to draw your attention to as well. Um, within Find My Past search, for newspapers there is um, cert certain uh, filters that you can use which I will come on to in a little while as well um, but there's one of them that's just for family notices so it'll be things like births marriages and deaths you can filter the newspaper to just focus on those births marriages and deaths so hopefully that's a useful tip that you'll be able to put into practice so what else can newspapers give you well it's they're really offering life through a local lens so it's not just um, information about your family but actually the wider world around your family as well your relatives place in their community what was going on in the world in your low in your your family's local area at the time and um, business advertisements if your family owned a, owned, a, owned a family business there'll be details maybe of what they were advertising and how they were trying to market their business and get new customers in any meetings and events that took place in the local area did your ancestor attend them um, you could find out just by looking in the newspapers. And of course, national and international news, but at a local level. So this newspaper is from the Ogden Standard, which I believe is a city in Utah in the US. Um, and this was published on the 12th of November, 1918. And for all of your you history buffs out there, you'll know that that was the day after the, the official end of the First World War was declared. So armistice, it's all about armistice, but actually it's relating back to that local city and, and details of the people who are involved from that local city. So you can kind of see, yes, you're you're looking at a really a piece of history, but actually you're looking at it from the point of view of that your ancestor would have been reading about it in the, in the newspapers. Newspapers can also give you the whole what, what the holy grail for many family historians, which is photographs and sketches. Um, photographs from usually feature from around the 1910s onward when they became mainstream. Before that, you might find sketches just like the one that you can see here on the screen, which is from the Illustrated Police News. If I was to recommend maybe one newspaper for anyone who hasn't looked at the newspapers on Fire Pass to go and look at, it would be the Illustrated Police News. The stories and the I images that you can see in that is just astounding. So you definitely want to have a look at. But the photographs and the sketches that you find in these newspapers um, they're not just of who you might think famous people from history, historic icons. It's actually everyday people as well. So you have a really good chance, and especially as time goes on and you're moving into the 20th century, you have a really good chance of finding family members with a photograph of them in the newspapers. If you have people on your family tree from the 20th century who you've never seen before, check the, check the newspapers. You might just find a photograph of them. Another tip here that I've included is to use um, the filters to search for images only. Um, and that's because there are several specialist illustrated newspapers on Find My Pass, just like the one that I've just mentioned, which is the Illustrated Police News that you can see on the screen there. But there are other ones that are, are purely illustrated titles. And illustrated is obviously in, is, is sometimes in the title. So you can actually search by newspaper, search for the word illustrated, and you'll see what's available. So that leads me on nicely to what, exact, what exactly is available on Fly My Pass. So let's take a bit of an in-depth look at that. 
Um, British newspapers. So we have the largest collection of historical British newspapers online today. Um, they date from around 70 and 10. Um, at the moment, at last count, and I put this presentation together last week, so there was just under a thousand titles. So we're almost hitting the 1000 mark for the, the number of titles across Britain. And there is at least one one pet newspaper for every county in England. There's also several newspapers for Wales and several newspapers for Scotland. And you're talking about regional newspapers, but also really local newspapers. So pretty much every town, every village, every county is represented with the newspaper collection on Find My Pass. So go and have a look, try and find your family's local area and their local newspaper and see what you can discover. It's not just British newspapers though. In terms of Ireland, we have just as big a collection. Well, actually it's a, it's a smaller collection, but it is also the largest collection of historical Irish newspapers online. It dates from a little bit earlier, so around 1708. But again, there's a, there's a newspaper representing every county in Ireland. So no matter where you're from in Ireland, whatever county your family came from, there's gonna be a newspaper that might have something in there about them. At the moment, at last count, there was around 188 titles on there, um, but that is growing all the time. And then as when we cross the Atlantic to the US and what the representation is over there, well, it's an extensive collection and it, you're talking thousands of titles here. You can see there from last count, there was over 1100 titles. They date from around 1751. So again, a lot of people don't think newspapers go too far back into, 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 the, into the past, but actually in the 1700s, there is plenty of coverage. So do go and search. Don't just uh, dismiss them in case you think that they're more from later on. Go and have a look and see what the, the year coverage is. There's also a newspaper for every uh, state in America. Um, so again, quite good coverage across the board, wherever your family ended up or came from in America. Um, there should be something that represents their area in there. And then from around the rest of the world, we have a very diverse collection of, of newspapers as well. It's over 90 titles and that's growing all the time as well. The majority of those, I think around 70 of those 90 titles come from Canada. Um, but there's also titles from Jamaica, titles from China, titles from Germany, titles from Denmark. So there is a, a small plethora, a plethora of different um, newspapers that you can look at and again they date from around 1751. So when it comes to um, how these newspapers actually make it online well we partner up with prestigious with some prestigious, prestigious partners um, the British Library is by far our biggest partner when it comes to the newspapers that we digitize the majority of our British and Irish newspapers come via the British Library's collection and um, but we also partner with other smaller publishers as well and um, it, they're all poured into the same collection. Um, our US and world newspapers comes from a partnership with newspaperarchive.com. Um, and the newspaper collection in terms of the British and Irish newspaper collection is also available on our sister site, britishnewspaperarchive.co.uk. And I'll come on to that in a little bit more as well. Just to mention as well, that the newspaper collection on For My Past grows all the time. So every single week we add thousands more pages. So even if you delved into the newspaper collection a month ago or six months ago, and you couldn't find anything that you were looking for, or anything from your ancestors area, it's always worth going back to try again because more and more it's growing and growing, and growing all the time, more and more pages are added. How do you actually get access to these newspapers? Well, because of their richness and the value that they bring to people, they're included in our top level subscriptions. So if you're accessing from um, the UK, Ireland or Australia or New Zealand, you will want to choose the pro subscription. If you're accessing from North America, you will want to choose the ultimate British and Irish subscription and access to both of those or um, taking out a subscription to both of those options will give you access to the full newspaper collection. So moving quickly on onto some search tips and tricks for the newspapers. How can you actually make the most of these great um, resources? Number one is the filters are definitely your friends when it comes to the newspapers on Find My Past. Um, it's how you narrow down your search results when you're searching. Um, when you look at the British and Irish newspapers, these are the filters that you have available. You can filter by date. You can filter by the place. That can be the city, the town, or the village. You can filter by the county that the newspaper comes from, the actual newspaper title itself, which is useful sometimes if you already know the newspaper that you're looking for. You can just select the newspaper filter, type in the name of the newspaper, 
newspaper and then you're concentrating on just that newspaper but you can also um, filter by certain types of articles and this is what i touched on earlier on about family notices but within um the article type filter you can fi you can just focus on advertisements articles family notices illustrated illustrated articles and then miscellaneous so that's another good way of maybe you know trying to find photographs or images of of things you could um, just focus on the illustrated filter in terms of the us and world newspaper collection and um, that that allows you to filter by country by state by publication and by date range and also just to say that both the the, the British newspaper collection, the Irish newspaper collection, and the US world newspaper collection are all in separate search screens on Find My Pass, which you will see, but you can access them by going to search on the top menu and newspapers and periodicals. Next, next of my tips is that news spread, and there's a there's a, an example on screen of just how much it spread. So this first um, little snippet that you can see on the left hand side is about an, a murder that took place in Dublin in 1739. So it took place in Dublin, and it there it is published in the Ipswich Journal on the 12th of May 1739. Two days later, in the Caledonian Mercury, the same story is published. And on the same date that it was published in Ipswich, it's also published in Newcastle, in the Newcastle Current on the 12th of, of May, 1739. So this, what this tells you is don't just limit yourself to your local newspaper or the newspaper that you think might have the story about your family. Spread your net far and wide. You can see here it went from Ipswich to Caledonia, to the Caledonian Mercury to Newcastle, but it but it concerns an event that happened in Dublin. So that just tells you how news spread. The other thing to know is beware of delays. And that's shown obviously by um, the difference between the Ipswich Journal and the Caledonian Mercury. It was two days later when that story was published in the Caledonian Mercury, but sometimes it could be several days later. It could be a week later. It could be a couple of weeks later. So again, don't just limit yourself to around the date that you think a particular event happened. Spread out the dates and, have a, and check um, search further than you might think. The other thing is to also cross-reference the newspapers with other records. So if the event is about a murder like this one, you might want to check um, crime records, court records for any mentions of the same incident. Another tip is to put yourselves in the person's shoes or the publisher's shoes even. So think of the language of the time, how things we say today might not have been used back then and you know language changes over time so there might be certain things how we refer to certain events um might have changed um a bit of a uh, one to think of an example of one is actually if somebody committed suicide you'll often see it in the old newspapers written as they did away with themselves a little bit morbid but that's just an example that i can think of off the top of my head also know that the names of events will have changed over time um we we refer today um to the first world war and the second world war but actually at the time when that that those events were happening they wouldn't they weren't the first world war or the second world war they were just the war because it was happening at that time so again searching in newspapers for the first world war and expecting to see results from the time that the first world war was happening you're not going to see you're just going to be searching for the war and um, the other four points here first names are not always included use name variants and nicknames search for an event instead of a name and the ocr issue use several search combinations they all tie into the same type of thing of how to get around actual searching the the kind of in um, eccentricities of newspapers i suppose so sometimes you might want to if you can't find someone by their first name just go by the, sur the surname and um, try searching for nicknames and name variants i know the news the search tools on find my past and the british newspaper archive allow you to do that so they're really handy um, and if you can't find the name of someone that you're looking for, but you know that they were involved in a certain event, search for that event first. So even if you can't find that person, you're getting some more context about the event that actually happened, some clues that actually happened, and that might open up another avenue of research for you. The OCR issue is all about how the newspapers are actually digitized and how they're, they're made searchable. So sometimes it's technology, so stuff can go wrong with it sometimes. So my my tip there is just to use several search combinations keep searching in different ways take out names take out event names try it different ways and just until you've exhausted all of the possible combinations that you can think of 
So the British Newspaper Archive, as I've mentioned, is the sister site of Find My Past. And the exact same newspaper collection that's on the British Newspaper Archive is also available on Find My Past. So the, the content is not different. The exact same papers, they get uploaded at the same times, they get released at the same times. It's exactly the same collection. However, what the British Newspaper Archive does have is some extra search tools because the British Newspaper Archive isn't just designed for people interested in their family's history, it's just people interested in history in general, so, which obviously newspapers are really useful for as well. So you've got an advanced search on there, you've got an exact search, um, you've got extra filters that you don't have on Find My Pass, so you can search by recently added titles or people who have tagged the, the information on the British Newspaper Archive. There's also a dedicated search called In Pictures, which is just for images. So you can use that. Um, you can also save your newspaper searches on the British Newspaper Archive in my in a feature called My Research, which is a handy tool as well. You can organize into different folders um, if you're researching. So often what I would tell people, and it's kind of like an insider's hack really, um, perform your search if you're not finding anything on Find My Pass in terms of the newspapers perform your search on the British Newspaper Archive and then if you've got a Find My Pass subscription jump onto Find My Pass to actually view the search result because you'll have the details that you need to actually go and look at the search result look at the newspaper page on Find My Path. if you're not already registered with the British Newspaper Archive you might as well go and do it because you get three free views and again like i say it's free to register on there you your first three three pages are free and then you can keep searching on the british newspaper archive and then jump into find my pass if you've got a subscription to view the actual page don't forget to save your discoveries so this is really important as well so as you search on find my pass or the british newspaper archive you'll see what you've searched for will be highlighted on the page the results page that that comes up so what you can do there is actually zoom in on that selection of the page you can download that you can snip that if your device that you're using whether it's a computer or a smartphone and um, if it has a snipping tool you can snip that and save it offline but obviously the more that you search the more you'll find and the more that you find the more important it is to preserve that and, and those rich stories you want to add them to your family tree and and you know create this whole family story rather than just finding something and then just letting it go or having to search all over again so if you find something really interesting i really encourage you to save it like i mentioned the british newspaper archive has the save research section but if you can't access that then you can always download it and then add it to your family tree where can you find more help and advice on newspapers um you can read a number of online guides um the British, both the Find My Past and the British Newspaper Archive blogs are packed with tips and tricks on how to get around the newspapers and how to navigate them and how to make the most of them. So definitely go online there to read more. And um, join the Find My Past forum. It's it's thriving. There's thousands of people on there now, and a lot of them are like minded, just like you, interested in finding out more about your past. Join the forum if you've got a question to ask. Reach out to the forum. People will be more than happy to help. Um, and if all else fails, you can always contact us. We've got a friendly um, customer support team based in Dundee in Scotland. So drop them a line on support at findmypass.com if you're having any issues with the newspapers and they will do their utmost to, to help. So thank you very much for listening. I'm just going to look at some of the questions that have been coming in um, as we come towards the end of this session. And I will try to get through just a few to finish us off. Um, so Amy Evans, thanks for your question, Amy, has asked, how can I use newspapers to track First World War ancestors who survived the war? Okay, so I think I mentioned this um, during the presentation, Amy, but actually, first things first, don't refer to it as First World War when you're, ser when you're searching the newspapers because it will just be the war. So that's, that's the first tip that I would say. So how can you track them after they've survived the war? Well, I would cross-reference newspapers with military records. I think that's a really good tip to do. Um, there are also some specialist military newspapers. So if you go into the collection on Find My Past and you browse through, you'll see that some of them um, are dedicated just to soldiers who are served on the front line, so they can be listed in there. Um, very often, if you get their name, the name of the soldier um, in the newspaper, then you can track them moving forwards from that, whether it's through birth records, through the 1939 register, which obviously would have happened a number of years after the First World War, but that's how you would just kind of take it forward rather than backwards. 
So thank you for that question and hopefully um, that answers it. Uh, Sean Beatty has asked a question as well. Thank you, Sean. Um, he says, my ancestor's local newspaper was Hexham Current, but availability in FMP doesn't seem to cover World War One years. Any chance this could be added soon? Uh, hopefully, Sean, is, is the short answer. But like I said, like I mentioned, um, we're adding all the time to the newspaper collection. So it's definitely worth checking back every now and again. There's also on the British newspaper archive a section of the site. And if Alex um, can hear me and he wants to pop this in the comments, it, it would be great. If not, I'll do it afterwards. But there's a section of the site on the British newspaper archive where you can actually request what newspaper you'd like to be added next. And the more votes from the community members, um, that that gets then it will be prioritized in a list of the way it's really released so hopefully there will be more coverage sometimes it's just that the, the we don't have the license to publish for the certain years or something but if it's a straightforward um, from the British British Library collection it should be available and it, it should be published in time um, another question has come and um, come in from Amy um, how can you confirm that names mentioned in the newspapers are your family? And this basically is, um, again, about, all about cross-referencing, Amy. It's, it's cross-referencing newspapers with the other records. So you'll need to, once you see a, a, a name mentioned in the newspaper and you have a suspicion that it's someone in your family, use the details from that article. Like sometimes you won't just get names, but you'll get where they, their address or their age. So use those details to cross-reference with the other record sets on Find My Past, whether it's census records, birth, marriage, and debt records, check if you can confirm, and then hopefully you'll find a link that actually confirms that it is the right person that you're thinking of. Um, another question from Sean again. Um, have you any South African newspapers from early 29th century 20th century and um, trying to find out in, information information about ancestors who was a policeman near Cape Town so um Sean I did mention that the world newspaper coverage so if you go on to the final past um, world newspapers and filter by country I pretty sure when I was looking at the numbers last week when um, adding up the number of titles that we have for each section and um, I did see a, a title from South Africa so that might be worth going to have a look at um, we are also in the midst of adding a number of Commonwealth, title, Commonwealth titles. We've added some from Barbados, Canada, Pakistan, India. So hopefully that will include some from, from South Africa in time to come again. But again, the big tip there is just keep checking back again and again because it is always worth going back. More will be added over time. Um, and that is, brings us to around the 30 minute mark. So hopefully that was a, a nice whistle stop tour of our newspaper collection for everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. And yeah, I, I, I will jump into the comments after this. And if you have any more questions, I will try to answer them for you. But thank you very much for joining me. Bye bye.